Hi DIY friends! Today's video is likely going to be some intense DIYing. If you're new here, I want to say welcome. My name is Shannon, the Daily DIYer, and today's video is a mystery box challenge. So first up, thank you to Caitlin from Crafts by Caitlin for sending me this box. I in turn sent Kristen from Kristen K a box full of Dollar Tree items. Two of the items in here are challenge items and the big twist this round is that we have to use both of those challenge items in the same project. And if I look and sound a little bit concerned, it is because I absolutely am. I have no idea what's in this box. Caitlin said she was nice to me, but you guys will have to be the judge of that. And the way I like to do this is to dive into this box, show you everything, but I also want to thank Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. She is hosting this mystery box challenge today. Let's start with the card that I saw on top, and I have to say those are the cutest YouTube stickers I've ever seen. Caitlin, you have to let me know if you made those or not because I need some more of those in my life. <laughs> so Caitlin writes, hey girl, I can't wait to see what you come up with using these random items. Challenge items are wrapped in different color. I tried to be nice. Love Caitlin. <laughs> I hope, I hope I agree with you. I hope I agree that the items that are challenge items, which here's the first one, and here's the second one. Hopefully these are nice. Let's save those for last. Wow, she wrapped every single thing though. I don't do that, I just throw everything in the box. I feel like this makes it a little bit scarier that you can't just open it and go through it. Okay, so the first thing is a garden flag. I have to say I've never DIY'd a garden flag from Dollar Tree yet, so I'm gonna have to do that today. All right, so there's two things in this one. There are napkin rings and some of this burlap trim. There is a dry erase framed board. Oh, this is cute. It's a wooden circle that says home on it. That is so cute. All right, we have a palette style wood sign. An ivy garland. This is like a wooden rectangle sign. It says, take the risk or lose the chance. That's actually a really cool saying. All right, this is the last regular item and then we'll get into the challenge items. Okay, so this video is going up after Easter and these are little bunny paw picks. What in the world? I feel like this is a challenge item. I have no idea. But let's get into the challenge items because hopefully those are not Easter related. <laughs> okay, okay, this is not bad. It is actually a really pretty minty green paisley scarf. That's not bad and actually really pretty. I think I can work with that. Okay, I've used these in quite a few different DIYs. But now I'm gonna have to come up with a new idea. It is a LED hanging lamp. So you just flip the switch on and then there's pretty fairy lights in there. So now I gotta come up with a new, new idea. And I gotta incorporate this with it too. So this could be interesting. <laughs> Let's get to DIYing. First, we're gonna work with this wood sign. I immediately thought, let's make a high-end looking decorative cutting board with this. To get started, we're gonna cut off the jute from the top and also remove the sticker because we're gonna be using the back side of this. Then you're gonna take some Dollar Tree spackle and fill in that hole. Once you've done that, you wanna let that sit and dry and then you can come back and sand that smooth. Next, we're gonna work on the handle of our cutting board. This is just a scrap piece of a paint stir stick, and we're gonna use some tin snips to kind of add an angle towards the bottom of this handle. You can also use heavy duty scissors if you have them on hand, but you can find these tin snips for only about $5 at Walmart. So I'll link those down in the description box below to make them easy for you to find. I also went ahead and sanded that smooth so there were no splinters. 
Now we're gonna flip that sign to the back side so we can work on the back, which is actually the front. We're gonna add some hot glue to the end of our handle and you can use a popsicle stick or an extra piece of paint stir stick cut down to size as a brace piece on the back that's gonna keep our handle upright. Now at this point, I forgot to <laughs> film the part where I put down painter's tape and then painted this sign, but I'm sure you can get the gist of it. You just put a piece of tape down right through the middle, paint the whole thing white, and then you can go ahead and remove that tape. The reason we did that is because we're also going to paint that stripe with some brown paint so it looks like it is stained wood. Now for the big reveal, go ahead and remove your tape and you have that nice stained wood stripe right down the center. We're also going to add a little bit more detail to this. We're gonna drill a hole into the top side of the handle. You can see that here. And then we're gonna add some jute and just tie a simple knot on the end to really give it that detail. My inspiration was this Pottery Barn cutting board that retails for $129, but this one you can get a pretty good knockoff for only a couple dollars instead. Now, of course, you just want to use this for decorative purposes only, not as a real cutting board, but I still think it turned out super duper cute. Now we're going to work on those napkin rings from our mystery box. I'm also going to be using a small piece of the scarf. Now remember, this has to be used in our big challenge project too, so stay tuned to the end and it will get used again. So what we're doing here is we're going to make a pin cushion and I needed to close up the bottom. So this is a piece of stiff felt that kind of match the color of the napkin ring. I'm going to hot glue that onto the bottom and then flip it over right side. We're going to grab out some poly fill stuffing and stuff the inside of that and then comes into play a portion of that scarf so I'm gonna lay that out flat grab a big ball of that stuffing make a ball with it and then wrap the scarf around it kind of giving it that tufted effect we're gonna grab the bottom kind of turn it make sure to take some twine here tie it up a few times, make sure it's good and tight, and then we can trim those tails off and also trim the excess fabric from the bottom. And this is actually going to be the top of our pen cushion. All we have to do now is take some hot glue, add it to the napkin ring, and press that down into place. And here's what it looks like all finished. It's so cute and it was so simple and easy. A great addition to your craft room or your sewing station, but I still have three more of these napkin rings left. So let me know down in the comments below, what would you repurpose them into? This block sign kind of had me stumped for a while and then it all came to me at once. We're gonna make a summertime napkin holder, but I needed another one of those block signs to finish this project. So luckily I had a piece left over from a prior craft that I grabbed out along with this shadow box frame that's from Dollar Tree too. I needed to dismantle that a little bit before getting to work on this. We do need to cut these blocks down to size so they'll fit within that frame. So I'm using a really simple Hand saw and miter box. You can find these for only about 10 or $12 at Walmart, and I'll make sure to link this down below too. I use this all the time with my crafting. So if you don't have one, highly recommend this inexpensive tool for your craft stash. So once I had them cut down to size, two pieces you can see here, we're also gonna have to drill out a couple holes in these because we're gonna be adding a dowel rod on the top, which is gonna hold down our napkins in the end. So here's the two holes in each one and we're gonna take our handsaw again and we're gonna saw down into the sides, which you'll see here kind of opens up the top so we can slide that dowel rod right in there. So I did that on both of those. And now it's time to paint. I had this fun peacock color from Waverly. This is a Walmart chalk paint. And I thought it would be such a fun and bright color for summertime. So every single piece got two coats of this to make sure it all blends nicely together. Once the paint is dry, you can go ahead and take some hot glue or some wood glue here and add it to the bottom of those block signs to attach them to the inside of the frame. Yeah. 
So here's what we have so far. And I will say I'm going to suggest drilling your holes for the dowel rod lower than that. So you actually will get some adjustment room as your napkins kind of run out and it'll help hold it down. So that's one thing I wish I would have done. So I have to go back and adjust that. But your napkins go right in the center. And then this is a 3 8 inch size dowel rod. And I made sure my drill bit was also 3 8 inch size. So it would slip right down into that space and then it holds your napkins down and you can see here this is why i wish i would have added a little bit deeper of a space so there was room for adjustment up next are these bunny paws okay i had a really hard time i'm not gonna not gonna lie here i was not quite sure what i wanted to do i knew i love this fabric though so that's my starting point i also like the contrast between the felt little pieces on the feet so I cut a heart out of those and then using a Dollar Tree rotary tool and cutting mat I cut the fabric down so it's kind of going to look like a quilt square is what <laughs> I'm telling myself I did my best here I hope you guys like it basically turn these guys into magnets pretty cute so I end up doing two of those since I had two little legs and we're gonna turn those into a magnet with this Xyron machine. This is a really cool machine. I'll link it down below too. It makes stickers, it laminates, and in this case, we're gonna use it to make magnets. You just crank the handle, it pulls the, the material in, and when it comes out, it's a magnet. It even has a built-in slide blade to make it easy to take that off and then you can go ahead and take your scissors and trim these out and you have an instant magnet. I love this fun little machine. We actually used it to create magnets for our Christmas cards this past year. So it's just like a fun little extra addition to the Christmas cards to create something decorative, reusable, and also just a little sweet keepsake. We're gonna take this dry erase board up a notch and turn it a little bit more into a high-end looking piece. We're basically going to tear it apart first and then we'll put it back together, I promise. You wanna keep the top and bottom wood pieces. We're not gonna need the bottom pieces. And we're gonna grab out our handsaw and miter box again and just cut those points off so then it is flush. So I did that on both of them, the top and the bottom. So here's what those top and bottom pieces look like now. You can go ahead and sand them a little bit if you like. I went ahead and painted these with a dark brown paint and also took a baby wipe over them that kind of removes some of the excess paint and makes these look more stained than painted, which I love that effect. Now we're gonna take some super glue and put a few dots at the top and the bottom before reattaching the wood pieces onto the dry erase board. I'm going to be adding some vinyl that says to do to the top of my dry erase board. But if you don't have a vinyl cutter, you can also use letter stickers that you can get from the craft store and then write whatever you like on yours. It just makes it to where this part is not going to erase off. Now we're going to use that burlap trim for from our mystery box. And I decided to use that to dress up a dry erase marker, which is also from Dollar Tree. To make this even more convenient and handy, I had some Velcro stickers from Dollar Tree that I decided to add to the back of this pen and then attach onto the front and the bottom of the board. That way it is continually with the board. It doesn't get lost and then you can use it when you need it. Pop it back on when you're done. I love that simple things like this can take something inexpensive and just with a few steps, turn it into something that looks much more high end. 
And now we're gonna make a hook board out of this palette sign. And we're actually gonna use the back side as the front. So we need to take off the sticker, remove the staples and also the jute from the back. Then we're gonna go ahead and sand everything smooth so that there's no splinters. To make this pretty, we're gonna use this wax and I'll show you how to apply this or how I apply it. I use a baby wipe and I just rub the wax right onto the wood directly. You can also use a wet paper towel for this and it just gives it a really pretty finish. Now we're gonna use one of these inexpensive screw hooks into the top in the center of the cross slat. I'll also make sure to link these down in the description box below for you too. And it's just that easy to add a hook onto a sign. Now we need to hang something from that hook. So we're gonna make a little macrame hanging succulent thing. So I have eight pieces of string here and I'm tying them all together at the bottom with a knot. We're gonna separate those eight strings into four sections, two at the top, bottom, right and left side. This is the cutest little candle I've ever seen at Dollar Tree. It's a succulent candle. You don't wanna burn this, obviously. We're using this for decorative pur purposes for this. I used a little terracotta pot because we're gonna flip this upside down and I needed something to keep it from rolling around. So what you'll do is you'll put that knot on the bottom side of your pot and then you'll start tying knots. I will link a Pinterest find that shows you a really easy way to do this. But basically you're just grabbing two strings, tying knots until you get up to the top. And then you have a little bag basket for your pot or plant or candle or whatever to sit in. I did a couple on mine and I still felt like it needed some more so it didn't go flying away. So I went ahead and came back and added a few more knots around the sides. And then at the end, you'll see there is a really nice basket effect and the pot will then hang from our hook once we gather all these strings at the top and tie a knot. Then you can go ahead and cut all of the excess string that is hanging out there. And you can see we have the cutest little hanging succulent decorative piece. I love this. I love succulents. And I just think this is so, so cute, especially with summer and springtime upon us. Now for this ivy garland, of course, I'm sure you're seeing the leaves first, but did you know if you take these apart, you actually have a really nice piece of floral wire that's covered in a floral paper. So that's actually what we're gonna be working with for this project. What I did is I folded this wire equally into three sections and then took some pliers and cut them all down to size. So what we're gonna be doing is making a decorative garden orb with these. So we need to take each one of those pieces of wire and twist them into a circle. A pair of pliers helps with this process to make sure you get them tight. And then what you'll do is you'll cross two of them to make an X at the top and the bottom. And then you'll put the third loop around the center. Since this is made with paper coating, you can use some hot glue to help you keep all of those rings in place. Then we're gonna add this to a plant. This is one I just had on hand. Then to add it, I'm basically taking those parts where it was all twisted together. I wanted to cover those up. So we're gonna tuck those into the plant to kind of hide them. That way the seamless sides will be on the top. So I just kind of arranged the greenery and had this nice little orb sitting on top of a plant. I really love the look of this. It has a really classy kind of look and I see these a lot in high end stores and magazines. So this is such an inexpensive way to take a plant that you already have and kind of take it to the next level. And now the moment of truth, the challenge. Using this lamp and scarf in one project, I'm gonna blow your mind, you're not gonna see this coming. We're gonna make something using three quarter inch plastic PVC pipe 
some other things too. And I'm also going to take you to a place I never show you in my house. So stay tuned to the end because you're going to get your mind blown in more ways than one. <laughs> We're gonna cut this pipe down. You can do that with your handsaw and miter box. You need 14 inch size, four and a half inch size, two inch size, and also two 90 degree uh, elbows and an adapter. We're gonna put these pieces together, kind of creating an L shape and then putting that adapter at the end there. And we're going to take this outside and spray paint it. I am basically making a industrial style lamp and this spray paint which i'll link below to matches the silver tone of our dollar tree lamp perfectly so what i did is that i spray painted this two coats on each side and then we need to make the base so i have a three quarter inch size paddle bit and a two by two piece of scrap wood and i am going to drill a hole completely through one side of this two by You do want to drill completely 100% all the way through your two by and it'll all make sense here shortly. So once I had that done, I went ahead and painted it brown again with the baby wipe, taking some of that acrylic paint off so it looks more stained. I love seeing that wood grain showing through. Now for the scarf, we're going to cut a small strip out from one of the sides all the way down the length. And basically this piece of fabric is what's going to hold our light inside our pipe. So what I'm doing is just going to knot the fabric onto the hanger of the light, making sure to uh, tie it on really tightly, cut off the little excess piece. And then we're going to use the longer piece along with a pipe cleaner tied onto the end to kind of help us feed this all the way through the pipe. I also had to kind of take apart the pipe so don't glue it or anything before you get to a good point so you can take this apart and kind of work your way through so you can see here we're just going to feed the fabric through the pipe pull it tight and our little lamp is going to hang from the inside there pretty cool huh so we're going to go ahead and put all of those pipes back together after the fabric is fed through and then we can feed the fabric through the wood base piece too and i'll show you how we're going to attach that here in just a second but go ahead and feed that through the bottom and you'll see that the pipe fits down inside that hole and we need to keep the fabric taut so that our light doesn't come out right so we're going to on the bottom use a staple gun and just make sure to staple that down tight so it doesn't come back out and so here I am bringing you into my husband's music studio. Yes, there's even a drum set set up on the other side of the room, but his space is way more cool than my she shed. So I thought this lamp would fit in much better in his space. So he was so nice, cleaned off his desk for me so I could get a good shot of this finished product. Now go ahead and click the playlist I have linked down in the description box below that'll take you over to Kristen's video where you can see what I sent her and what she creates with it. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next one. Have a creative day.